pair of triangles here, right? Now we looked at these kinds of shapes and we were looking at similar figures. And I asked you to draw these triangles so they were roughly similar to each other. Um, they have the same features, they have the same proportions, but where they differ is, of course, size. Right? So you have this pair of triangles. Now you see that side that I've marked with the question mark, okay? When we were looking at similar figures, you worked out how to be able to calculate a side like that. What did we use? What kind of knowledge or reasoning did we employ to be able to say that this side is? Can someone tell me what it is? Oh, right, you're actually. I have no right angles in this triangle, by the way. They, it is a right angle triangle, but you don't know that yet. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, what is the actual length? What's the, what's, it's going to be 10, right? It's going to be 10. Now, hold on a second. How did you know? Think back, like two, three lessons. How did you know it was going to be 10? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. In similar figures, the ratios of, now ratios of what? Ratios of, there's a special word, not just any sides, ratios of corresponding sides. Thank you very much. Okay. So you see this one and this five, they're married together, right? They're matched. The one and the 10, sorry, the one and the five, they match. And in the same way, this two is what corresponds to the 10, okay? And you can see the ratio, it's one to five. And so if you take that one to five ratio and apply it here, you get two to 10, okay? So we said corresponding sides and similar figures are in the same ratio, great, okay? Now what I want you to do, Redraw the same pair of shapes, but don't, don't put any labels on it, okay? So if I had the same small triangle over here, and the same big triangle over here, okay? What we have learned in trigonometry so far, and if you might remember from previous years, and what we reviewed yesterday, is that for instance, if you have a side, and rather than knowing more sides, if you know an angle, that's what we started with yesterday to make all of our triangles. If you know an angle, and if you're in a right angle triangle, okay? In the same way that having all of the sides here tells you a lot about this shape, down here you've got a side, but you've got these angles. And we saw no matter what size of triangle you made, if you had the same angles over here, down in the corners, right? You were always going to get the same ratio, right? Now have a look, I mean I chose this because it was basically the one you did yesterday. You had your 30 degrees here. What pair of sides am I looking at over here? <coughs> I've got opposite, opposite, and hypotenuse, right? So that's why in this case you'd say sine, and we're even going to write this down, sine of 30 degrees is equal to 5 opposite over the question mark, the hypotenuse, right? Except sine 30 degrees, like all triangles in this proportion are going to have the same number there. We, you know, do you remember we did the table and we, we all punched it out with the exception of like some measurements that were slightly off. We all got a half as that ratio, right? That ratio of five over whatever, right, is going to be half. And you can see I can cross multiply here. And so your unknown is two times five, which is 10. It's the same shape as before, okay? Now, this is the working we're doing now versus, you know, I guess here I would write, have a look here. I would say one to five, one to five. That ratio, those corresponding sides, that's going to be two to, we didn't know what it was before, before we worked out it was 10, okay? So here what you're looking at with these similar figures is, tell me how these guys relate to each other, that guy and that guy. But down here, I haven't even talked about a second triangle yet, have I, right? I've just been in this triangle's world, okay? So I'm looking at these, these sides rather, and comparing them. But it's the same, you see, it's the same ratio idea. Did you want to ask a question? Dividing side by sine 30? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by two. Now what this is saying is, remember, you made 24 triangles for me that all had that 30 degrees in there, okay? When you see this and this, what it's implying for you is that there is some out, somewhere out there, some triangle that has this exact ratio, right? This 30 degrees, this right angle, right? This one and this two, which you can measure out using your ruler and so on. And this actually ends up being the square root of three, which is about 1.7, that's where the number comes from, okay? So trigonometry is built on the foundation of similar triangles. That's why it appears in MM3 about similarity, okay? So what we're focusing on is this skill I just demonstrated for you here. Finding sides in triangles 
If you know some angles, you know you're in a right angle triangle, if you just have one side, you can find out all the rest of them using this sine, cos, tan, this kind of hidden idea underneath, right? You know it now. You know this mystery, and so you can unlock any triangle you want. So, there was one example which I walked you through. I want you to see if you can help me out with this one. It's not going to be as neat anymore. I think it's something like this. And hmm. let's put it over here. Okay. So before we looked at these nice numbers, 30 degrees and 19 degrees. 19 degrees, 19 happens to be my favorite number. But uh, that was just a coincidence Why? that it gave us 1 to 2 and 1 to 3. This is some random angle. I have no idea what it's going to do. Okay? But I know there's going to be some similar triangle out there with this same number of angles. It's a different size, but I can use that relationship somehow with my calculator's help. Okay? So having a look here, if you have another color, it'll be really helpful. I want to think about this angle where I'm standing. I often actually, just like with the um, you know, the, the elevations and drawing and things, I like to sometimes put a person there up at this angle to help me remember where am I situated when I look at the features of this triangle. You look at the two sides that are there on the diagram that are marked out for us, right? One's known, one's unknown. What are they in relation to where I'm standing? I've got to choose from opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. What have we got? Opposite, adjacent. Okay, I've got an opposite side over here, the 15, right? So this one I'm going to label it as the opposite one. It's all the way over there. Now, it's true enough, x meters is right next to where I am, but it's not the adjacent side. Why not? It's actually the hypotenuse. Do you see that? The right angle tells me this has to be the hypotenuse, the longest side in the whole triangle. Even though I don't even know what the length of this is, this one's got to be longer. So I'm going to label this one as hypotenuse. Okay. So having identified um, opposite and hypotenuse is the pairing I got, I know with Sokotoa which of the two ratios would be useful to me. Which one? Sine. It'll be sine again, right? So I'm going to say sine of this angle that I'm interested in. Okay. 26 degrees. It's opposite, opposite, on hypotenuse. 15 over x. Okay, so x is the thing I'm trying to work out. This is like back in AM1. This is solving equations. I just need to rearrange a little bit, right? Looks to me like I can do two things at once. I can get this x rather than being down at the bottom. It's a bit of a awkward spot to be. I'm going to multiply both sides by x. Okay, So that's going to appear over here on the left and it's going to disappear over here on the right because I've multiplied through. Does that make sense? You following with me? But not only that, I want the x to be by itself. At the moment there's a sine 26 degrees over here on the left, so how do I get rid of it? I should divide through, very good. So sine 26 is going to appear here. They kind of like swap places if that makes sense. Okay. Now I have no idea what sine 26 degrees is. Thankfully, I have a calculator that will help me. I doubt it. I doubt it. So, with your calculator there, 15 divided by sine, sine 26. And it's going to give you a number. Can I get one? Actually, can I get all the decimal places and then we'll approximate together? What do we get? 34? Oh, 34.22. Yeah, 30. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm in the wrong mode. 34.217. 34. 34. 34. 34. So let's just go one decimal place. Okay. So let's pause for a moment. What have we just established, okay? Um, We've got a length here, by the way, sense check. Does it make sense? Does it look like something reasonable yeah, on the triangle? Really nice. Yeah, I think so. Um, I know my scale is pretty terrible, but I know this is going to be the longest side of the triangle. It's about twice as long. That makes sense. It's very similar to that triangle over there. 30 degrees, 26. They're not far off, are they? Okay. So what did we do in the triangle? What was my first step? Do you remember? It's colored. Does anyone remember what my first step was? I needed to know what the sides were in relation to my angle. Okay, you might like to write that down because it's a helpful step. Um, step one. What you want to do is say, well, opposite hypotenuse 
adjacent. Which one is which, right? So identify the sides in relation to the angle. Okay? And that's the angle up there. That's why I drew my man over there. Step two, once I knew that they were opposite in the hypotenuse, what did I do with that knowledge? What did I do with that knowledge? Think, think. It's when I started writing the equation. One. Very good. I thought, okay, sine cos tan, which one is going to connect the sides I've got? Seeing as it's opposite on hypotenuse, what I want is to identify the ratio, sine cos or tan, that connects the sides or that relates the sides together. Okay? So then I said sine, and then from there I was just filling in the details that were in the question, right? 26 degrees is the angle. 15 over x has to be in that order because it's opposite on hypotenuse after all. Okay. So step three is to write and then solve the equation. And you could see we had to do some algebra. We had to move things around so I got the x exactly where I wanted. And your calculator took care of the rest.